It doesn't matter what you can do theoretically. It matters what you can do practically. You may feel like you're not as qualified for a specific role, but if you have the hard skills and you can communicate that well, you can catapult to the highest level. No matter what background you come from, you can learn sales, engineering, Java, 35, 40, 45, yeah. 25, whatever age you are. You're navigating a new landscape, but it's not impossible. And if God empowers you, man, if God has you for that career, do it. I grew up around hip hop. I wanted to be a ball player and a rapper. And a lot of this stuff is smoke and mirrors man even in the christian space dude like you see these people doing good and trust me when i say they're not doing good if i came out from the trenches from the gutter i feel a duty and a responsibility to give back if that doesn't push you and motivate you man i don't know what will so listen y'all let's be real for those of y'all who've known anything about me before getting into the tech industry one of the things y'all know is that yo i started out as an artist now i was a spoken word artist but I was doing a lot of spoken word, poetry. I was heavy in the, of course, the Christian community, which I'm still a believer, still love Jesus, all that good stuff. But I was very heavy in the community to where I was doing a lot of poetry. I was around a lot of different like Christian hip hop artists, sometimes just other artists in general. And one of the things that I run into now being in the tech space, the people who don't know me, that they come to me and they're like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this tech stuff. But like, man, but I'm a creative though. I'm an artist. I don't feel like, I don't really feel like I could fit in that space because I'm just such a creative. And I kind of like laugh and chuckle because I'm like, well, I mean, I, I'm still a creative. You know, I was a creative. I still am a creative. But in many times they're like, well, man, besides, man, I was I was like a music artist or I still desire to be an artist or um, I do this other thing. And it's like, yo, we got to have some conversations with people that are creatives that are still creatives and that honestly have been able to make it further in their artistry journey than the majority of people have. Been able to be around certain people, have certain opportunities that most haven't seen. Nevertheless, they still are not just in tech, but they are thriving in tech as well. And so we're going to have these conversations, talk about how they're able to make that work, what they were able to do. And most importantly, how you can benefit from this conversation as well. Look, y'all, y'all know what it is, <laughs> man. Look, bro, I want to say congratulations first and foremost. But secondly, thank you, Nico, for being on Tech as a New Black. I appreciate you, man. It's an honor to be on the podcast, man. Hey, bro. Yeah. Hey, bro. This is fire because I know we connected recently a couple months ago yes, or a sir. few months ago, a couple, a few months ago, same thing. And um, yeah, since there, I got to, I was like, yo, let me check your stuff out. And I was like, yo, this guy makes some fire content. And I say, yo, his stuff is dope. And I'm real. I, I don't like to follow a lot of people. And it's not because I'm not one of those people who's like bougie. Like people on social media are bougie. They act like they Hollywood. I really don't <laughs> care about the followers, stuff like that. I play the game, but at the end of the day, it's all silly. But it's like, I like to follow people where I'm like, yo, you're doing stuff that inspires me. Mm. You're doing things that I feel like is, is giving value to my eyes. And it's likewise. I'm like, yo, I, I like to post content that I feel like is, is providing some level of value to people. And so when I saw your content, I was like, yo, this dude's dropping some cool stuff, creative content. I said, man, it's beautiful, like beautifully shot the way he's editing things. I said, yo, I got to follow. I got to continue to look into this stuff because because I straight up love it. But also... I loved it because I'm like, yo, this man's the whole time I'm watching this stuff. I'm like, yo, this this bro, he's he in tech too. Yes, sir. And it's like that makes it doubly fires. It's like, yo, he's a content creator, he's killing it. But it's like, yo, a lot of people don't know this man is funding a lot of the things he's doing with that tech bag. Facts, mm -hmm. bro. So so man, so let's get into it. So I didn't even know until really until like you know I saw your stuff for your bio and I was preparing. I didn't even know you were an immigrant. Like, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm thinking like, yo, you know, bro, born here or whatever. Obviously, I didn't think you were like, you know, white American or Native American or anything like that. Sure. But that being said, like, you're an immigrant from Colombia. Shouts yeah. out to people from Colombia. And, uh, bro, like, first off, like, where in Colombia were you born at? How long were you there? And when did you come here? What was that like? Yeah, man. So I was born in uh, Bogota, Colombia in yeah. 1991. So for context for everybody, Pablo Escobar was assassinated in 1993. Oh, so man. I was born towards the tail end of the Escobar era. Mm. Now, if you ask me or most Colombian born people about Narcos or the Escobar era, mm -hmm. we do not like it. Yeah. It was terrorism at its finest. Yeah. You know Ooh. what I mean? So uh, my mom's cousin assassinated by the Colombian or by the Escobar regime. Right. Wow. And uh, by 1998, my parents decided, you know what? This is not the country that we want to. We love Colombia. Yeah, like yeah. Colombians are, 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 are nationalists. They love Colombia. You know yeah. what I mean? So we'll, we'll put the flag up. But at the end of the day, when you're a young parent, you don't want your kids to be born and yeah. raised in that type of environment. So yeah. nine, 98, they moved us to the States. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was seven years old, man. 
And I remember leaving. I remember waking up that day and leaving my country. And uh, yeah, man, it was uh, it was a rug pull for sure. My parents had a paid off home, paid off car, family, friends, and they left everything behind to chase the American dream. You yeah. know what I mean? Bro, that's that's so beautiful to hear things like that. You know, since moving to Miami recently in and mind you, I've, I've always, all my life, known a lot of immigrants and a lot of different people that it recently sure. came here. But but moving to Miami is like on another level. Yeah. I meet the majority right. of people that I meet are not not from the U.S. Right. And in meeting them and hearing their stories and and you know just a variety of different stories is realizing like yo we're really blessed here in in this country. Now mind you, this country it's a lot of goofy stuff going on. Thanks. Yeah. And you know people are complaining about things. You know. But at the end of the day, I'm like, yo, to see what other people are going through yeah. in other places. Right. And to them, yeah, people look at the goofy stuff we do here and are like, what are y'all doing in America or in specifically in the, in the U.S.? And it's like, nevertheless, one of the things that I think that we miss out on is really just how blessed we are. Yeah. That I think many of us like overlook. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so you came here at seven and like you said, rug pull. Like at the time, were you able to? Like, were you speaking English at the time? Like, what was that experience like, even growing up here? Sure. So I, um, I had, I was fortunate. So I, I don't want to say I, I was not lucky. I was fortunate because I, in Colombia, you have private education, yeah, and you have public education, mm -hmm. and most people, even if they're lower middle class, they want to put their kids in private education. So yeah. I went to private education. I went to a Catholic school, and then I came here and. Uh, yeah, it was crazy, bro. Like, I felt like the public education system was insane. Like, I, I felt like I was I was seven and I could easily bypass anybody who was like nine, 10, 11 years old yeah. with my education in Columbia. So the first three months was literally just learning English. And once mm -hmm. I learned English, they're like, yo, this kid's smart, this, that, the third, whatever. But I knew it wasn't because of the fact that I was smart. I knew that it was because of the fact that I had gotten a good education in Colombia. Yeah. So most people don't know that. And this is one of the <clears> things that I want to impress upon people is like, just because you don't know the language doesn't mean you're not smart. Mm. And in Florida, bro, and uh, Texas and California, you have brilliant people, smart people, good hearted people. Yeah. And they don't know the English language. They yeah. can't navigate the language the, the way that most American people can. Yeah but they can contrib contribute to this country yes. in a very important way. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I, th I think that's really major. Uh, yeah. Eric, I, I, were you about to say something? Yeah, I was definitely about to say something. And it's, I don't even know if it's that significant, but I think that's important oh. to what you just said about, oh. like, just because you don't know a language don't mean that you're not smart. Because my wife's Dominican, and we go to Dominican Republic uh, a, a lot, and although I'm not extremely fluent in Spanish, I know that... Uh, I know the level of intelligence I have, but sometimes I can find myself like feeling like, dang, man, I feel stupid because yes, I don't I can't communicate with these people. Yeah. But in a state like I'm doing a whole lot of stuff. So yeah. I, I, I just that's powerful that you just shared that, like, just because you don't know a language, like, don't mean that you're stupid. So that's nice. I mean, that's that's a word for somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I think if anything, one of the things that I've been able to, to peep game on uh, being in Miami is I see people that they barely know English. But it's so interesting. If in some ways they're smarter than other people, mm. because I think it's because since they've had to navigate a landscape where they don't fully understand the language, mm -hmm. it's like it's almost as if their brains are able to pick up on things without language. Like like they're able to notice things faster than other people can. And yeah. they, it's and it's, it's really just the language, not the skills to do anything. Yeah. It's just the language. Yeah. yeah. That's bro. That's that's so real. That's so real. And I think kind of in that, it kind of makes me think about how there are a lot of people that are that are new to tech, and 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 I, and I promise y'all, like a lot of people see me and they're like, man, Cyrus, you got in tech and you were able to to scale so fast. Even at the companies that I was able to jump to, the movements I was able to make. And I mean, even my my first company that I was at, my first quarter actually out in the field as a sales engineer. Mm -hmm. I outperformed all of the sales engineers in the company, even mm -hmm. up to the senior and principal level in terms of how much money I brought the company in that quarter. And I, it was my first my first quarter. That's and mind great. you, the whole time, I wasn't sure if I even knew. I, literally, I'm thinking in my mind, like, man, am I doing good? Everybody's telling me, like, Cyrus, you're crushing it. You're killing yeah. it. And I'm like, oh, they're just being nice to me because I'm the new guy. 
you know, because I'm, ah, I'm black. They just trying to be nice, make me feel good, butter me up. But then, like, when I finally had a time to breathe and I felt like I was kind of getting things under control. Yeah. And I actually was like, let me look at the numbers and see. Because I'm thinking, like, okay, hopefully I'm not the bottom person. I went and looked and I, I was like, wait, I'm the top person. And it's so crazy because I was the least qualified because mm-hmm. even the other person that was as new as me, he was already an he was already an engineer. He was an electrical engineer, but he was already an engineer. He went to UGA and Georgia State University, and I no college, no none of that education. And I was like, "Yo, that's crazy." Yeah. And I think within that, there's a superpower that, that's sometimes in you not understanding the language. And again, we're using language right now metaphorically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You not fully being so integrated into the tech space and knowing all of the jargon, all the lingo, everything that's going on. To where it forces you to one lean on other skill sets that you have, whereas other people can rely on the their their vast knowledge that they already have, mm-hmm. and it can make them miss out on other forms of using that metaphor, other forms of communication. Yes. Where some people just use use language in terms of like speaking, whereas the majority of communication is nonverbal. And likewise, there are skill sets, and not just myself. This is. I mean, everybody in this room, but also those of y'all that are viewing and listening, there are skill sets that we have that are valuable to the tech industry that are not necessarily technical. And so anyway, I went off on a huge spiral, a huge tangent, but I was just kind of thinking about like, I was like, man, because I was really thinking, I said, yo, I've been amazed at how brilliant people are right. that can't even speak English. In an, uh-huh. Like I'm, I'm watching them do things and I'm, and I'm watching them pick up on things and then be like, no. Nah. And I'm like, oh, they peeping game with all type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I'm thinking through that. And I'm like, yo, that shows how how deeply woven and powerful like God has truly made us to be. And sometimes we like limit ourselves yes, and rely sir. too much on just one particular thing. Right. No, you 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 said it all right there, bro. Because I, I was gonna I was just gonna say that for me when I learned uh, so one of the first languages that I learned was Java. Yeah. And I remember learning english Mm -hmm. for the first Mm. time and i said you know my parents did it when they were 35 Mm -hmm. i'm learning it when i'm 32 right or 31 at the time if they did it your parents learned english at 35 you're saying you're learning java exactly okay yes sir yes Yes, sir sir. so i said if they can learn english navigate the financial landscape of a new country navigate the 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 policies the, the the culture all that stuff I'm just learning one language, bro. Come, Come on. on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm already living here, dog. Yeah. Like, so for me, I was like, if they can do it, I can do it too. And that's what I want to empower people today. It's like, no matter what background you come from, you can learn sales, engineering, you can learn Java, you can learn whatever language you want today, 35, 40, 45, yeah. 25, whatever age you are, you're navigating a new landscape. Yes. Yeah. But it's not impossible. And if God empowers you, man, come on. Yo. There's no boundaries, bro. Yo. There's no boundaries, man. If God has you for that career, do it. Yeah. Cuz you can impact more people than you believe. Like you don't you, if God has you for that role, if God has you for that career, if God has you for that job, that industry, you will impact people in ways that you don't even know, man. Yeah, bro. It's insane. It's bro, insane. I love it. Hey, so listen y'all, we need to talk about Pivot Tech Bootcamp. Pivot Tech is a virtual bootcamp that guarantees job placement. Yes, y'all heard that correct. They guarantee job placement. Now, they have a variety of different courses, including what the guest is talking about that you're listening to right now. But outside of those courses, they also assist with different forms of mentorship and other forms of education. Not only do they provide mentorship and career placement, but we've partnered with them and they're allowing our audience up to $300 off with our discount link, Tech is the New Black. So again, that's hashtag Tech is the New Black to get up to $300 off their courses. Now again, y'all, they're worth checking out. They guarantee career placement, but when you do their bootcamp, make sure to keep us posted on your journey breaking into tech. All right, so you, you came in, into America as, a, as an immigrant. We talked mm-hmm. a little bit about your experience early on. Now, we also know that you, we touched a little bit on you being an artist, being a creative. Yes, sir. So, bro, let's definitely, we got to dive into that because we can't just jump to, okay, you're in tech now. We got to sure. dive into, okay, what all was Nico's experience, you know, late teens, 20s, sure. all of that? What did that look like? So, mind you, I came from a very traumatic experience mm-hmm. in Colombia. My 
my my parents had assassination attempts. We came here as asylum God. refugees, right? So when I say that I Okay, so I, I came here seven years old and I tried to assimilate to the American culture. The way that I assimilated was through hip hop. Yeah. Mm. Because for me, that was the disenfranchised, mm -hmm. poverty stricken, mm -hmm. violence written. Mm -hmm. That's what Colombia is. Yeah. You go to the hood, that's the same thing that yeah. it is, you know? Yeah. Colombia is the second most, uh, in terms of uh, population wise, percentage wise, you have the second most uh, Afro Latino, mm -hmm. right? You have a mix of cultures, and you also have um, political corruption. You had drug trade. You had all this stuff, bro. Yeah. So we came out of that, and we come to this country not welcomed. Mm. All good. I I want to earn my respect. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you when you come into tech, you want to earn your respect. You know what I mean? Yeah, you work for real. that. Yeah. So when I was you know when when I was young, I had a lot of uh, imposter syndrome. I felt like I wasn't. Um, I didn't have the confidence. Mm -hmm. So as I'm growing up, the way that I articulated my confidence was through education. Mm -hmm. I, I did well in school. I was fine. But somewhere along the line, man, I fell in love with hip hop mm -hmm. because I love that storyline. I yeah. love the fact that like there was young, uh, you know, whether it's African-American, Latino yeah. people that mm -hmm. came from the struggle, that came from the same gutter that I came from yeah. and made something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. They didn't, and I and, and I, I, I might get canceled for this, man. Bro, say but, it. But they they didn't take a victimhood mentality. Come on, you know what I mean. Come they on. They, yeah. they took ownership for this is what this is where I'm at. Yeah. This is where I want to be. You yeah. know what I mean. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my skill set mm -hmm. the best to my ability, like to the best of my ability, and I'm gonna make something out of that. That's yeah. real. And I saw entrepreneurs. I saw incredibly intelligent people. Yeah, I saw people real. who were articulate with their words, salesmen. But Thanks. they translated that and they transferred that to from doing things that were not uh, productive to their neighborhoods yeah. to doing something that was like, all right, we're telling our story. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it wasn't the best, right, for their yeah. neighborhoods because yeah, they were articulating a story that was reciprocated upon and um, that continued to perpetuate that same exactly. storyline. Yeah. Right? And even popularized it. Yeah, and popularized mm -hmm. it. But at the same time, they were just tel telling their story from, from, from their vantage point, right? Yeah. All that to say, man, I fell in love with hip hop around the uh, middle school age. I'm like, I'm recording, uh, learning to record myself, learning to make beats. By the time I get into high school, man, I'm getting a little bit of a uh, local notoriety, mm -hmm. no notoriety. And um, I decide that, you know, I'm going to become a, a rapper. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 gonna yeah. be either a ball player. I'm five foot ten, so that's not gonna, that's not gonna work out. <laughs> Yo, you know what I mean? That scrawny dude. So I'm like, all right, five foot ten, scrawny dude. So let me be a rapper. So then I start going down that path. I I start getting a little bit of notoriety, and then in college, man, I um, I find God, dude, or God find, finds me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dang. And um, I decide I want to make a bigger impact with my music. Yeah. Mm. And by that time. Um, I'm going to school. I got a full ride scholarship to the University of Florida, which for the record, Wall Street Journal just recognized the University of Florida for the number one public school in the nation. Oh, snap. You know what I mean? I got in there for mechanical engineering Okay. my first year. And I'm recording, doing videos on the weekends, going to mechanical engineering school mm -hmm. during the day. But at the same time, man, I'm, I'm, I'm torn, man. Like, I, I don't love the mechanical engineering route. So long story short, I, I pivot to advertising because I know yeah. I'm good with video, videography. I'm yeah. good with the graphic design. I'm good with all that stuff. And so my parents didn't have the, uh, the financial capabilities to back me up with uh, mechanical engineering. It was a five-year program. If I failed the class, I couldn't. I had to pay back the scholarship that I was, that I'd gotten yeah. because of my, my uh, academia or whatever. So, all right, so I'm gonna become uh, a rapper and I'm gonna get a um, advertising degree and I'm gonna market my music to the world. And that's what I thought. I mean, that's that's smarter than, than so many <laughs> yeah. people. Yeah. You at least were like, let me pair it with a, a true skill. And not rapping is still a skill, but let me pair it with a, a hard skill and then like help like, you know, expose and, and blow up my, my rapping career. But the funny thing is, man, cop, and, and I say this, to tell people college did not give me the hard skills i learned the hard skills 
through YouTube University, man. Mm-hmm. I learned video production, graphic design, marketing, mm-hmm. all through YouTube. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, if you take a boot camp, mm-hmm. if you take a course online, you can learn that skill set. The matter of time that it took me, it was like five, five years. Mm-hmm. You could compress that to three months. And you yeah. can get on that train and you can learn more than I learned in college. And by the time I graduated, I didn't have a job lined up. I was still a starving artist. Mm. And I yeah. said, I got to pivot. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I got to pivot. So that's what it was. So I know we were talking earlier about, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. So I, I want to, let's continue on this point. So you mentioned that you had to pivot. You, you know, you had finished college. You're like, okay, I'm still starving artist. Got to pivot. Pivot. So is that where you pivoted over to tech? No. <laughs> I wish. Okay, cool. All right, so, all right, so what did you pivot to? So um, when I was looking for jobs online, I knew that I was a good graphic designer. I knew that I was a good videographer. I had an advertising degree. degree. So I looked online and all the jobs were in tech. Web developer, UI, UX designer, yeah. right? Um, even in marketing, I couldn't find a job. And so I'm like, all right, I know eventually I got to learn some code. I got to learn this. I got to learn the tech trade. Uh, but not right now. So I started to learn, uh, I started to learn sales. Mm-hmm. So I went into a cold calling environment, which yeah. was not, it, the, the company that I was working at wasn't the best. And that's one of the things that I want to impress upon people is like, you have to find the right company for you as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, 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 the company that will, um, help develop your skill set, mm-hmm. the, the company that will, um, help support you. Right. So after I graduated school, 2012, went into the workplace, uh, and when I started doing sales, I'm like, I don't feel comfortable with that. You know, I want to be a little bit more creative. So I ended up in the insurance game in Tampa, Florida, through one of my best friends, John Levi Davidson. What's up, bro? Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, he, he he hooked me up 2014. And through that, I was still pursuing music part time. Mm-hmm. Ended up getting an MBA through that company and was working uh, full time as an insurance adjuster. Man, so... All right, so you got in as insurance adjuster. Yes, sir. And around, how old were you around this time? Bro, I was uh, 2014. I was 23 years old. Okay, 23. Yeah. Man, you know what's so crazy? Hearing all of the things that you were saying you were doing and how you felt like, okay, man, I finished school and I still didn't have anything. In my head, I'm thinking like you're like 29 or something. Yeah, nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so funny to see how young you still were. Yeah. But at the same time, your aspirations of things you wanted to do and where you wanted to be at was was still so broad and part part of me almost attributes that to i kind of think back to when you mentioned like you being like you know seven eight or you know nine years old and you saying like you were far advanced from some of the other kids and it's it's almost kind of crazy like today a lot of people are i, I feel like there's a lot of laziness that's going on today and mm-hmm. i mean i blame a lot of it just on the, the the state of our nation and things like that and just the state of how we're, we're kind of very coddled in a lot of different ways and so just kind of hearing that and hearing just where your mindset was at and just how much you were grinding. Because I know at 23, I was, yeah, I was not where where I should have, could have been. I mean, praise God, I'm at a dope spot now. But it's just dope hearing just even where you were at, even though where you were at is not where you wanted to be. It's not even where you're at now. Sure. But it was still like at a dope spot, but you still wanted so much more for yourself. Yeah, I think a lot of it was taking personal responsibility. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And um, I just downloaded uh, Jocko Willink, Willink, Willink's uh, oh. Extreme oh. Ownership. Yeah, right? he'll he'll, mm. he'll yeah. hype you up. But it's funny because I'm reading that book and I'm like, I felt that when I was seven years old, when my dad left to the, to, to the United States yeah. and my dad told me, you're the man of the house now. Mm. Ooh. I, at seven years old, you're the man of the house now. He, he left three months before we, we came to the States. He said, you're the man of the house now. I was the oldest in the house. And ever since then, man, like I felt like I was supposed to provide for not just myself, my mom, my sister, my dad. So when I came to the States, man, I felt like this extreme ownership to like want to do better for not just myself. And I think that's that's one of those things, man. It's it's mission driven. Like if you don't have a, a purposeful why, why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. What do you want to do? It, it, it's, it's gonna end, you know? Mm-hmm. You have to have a purposeful why. And then once you find that why, you can find out the what, mm-hmm. how to do it, and bro, believe when I say, man, tech is a huge leverage. Yeah. Naval Ravikant says, 
tech and media. Those are the two things as a single person, as mm -hmm. somebody who is an individual contributor, those two things will up your leverage more than you can imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think of, I mean, the, 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 the billionaires of today, right? They have leverage because of why? Tech and media. And, and media. Yeah, that's Joe really Rogan, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, Elon it's Musk. Huge. So it's, it's, it's those things. So I feel like if you can teach people the language, mm -hmm. the language of today, what is the language of today? Tech and media. Yeah. Those two factors, man. It's so crazy. Even you mentioned that. You mentioned Joe Rogan. My mind automatically went to Elon Musk. And I'm like, wow, like he's a tech giant who bought a media company. A lot of people, a lot of people don't consider Twitter as like a media, but it's a, that's literally what it is. Twitter Completely. is Facts. a media platform. Right. And he immediately was like, yo, let me get this media platform. I mean, Jeff, Jeff Bezos. A lot of people don't know. Amazon owns, oh, which one is it? Is it, is it New York Post? Or Wall Street, I think it's New York Post, New York Times. Uh, Amazon owns one of those. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of people don't know that. And so, uh, and I found that out through through reading the book, The Everything Store. And so, literally, Amazon. That's why some people say like they. I forget. It's either New York Times. Eric, let us know. Eric, gonna fact check me. He, he they own one of them, and people say that oh, you can't trust when that article speaks about Amazon because Amazon owns them. <laughs> and so, literally, these tech giants are buying these media platforms. Right. And so, like, literally, you send it, I'm like, oh, those are facts. That's literally yeah. what the tech giants are doing. Washington yep. Post. Washington Post. There you go. Thank you for that. All right, so cool. Yeah. Pre appreciate Eric for the... Uh, the, the fact. That, that felt like a Joe Rogan moment. When Joe Rogan be like... <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. I forgot his name, man. Yeah, He's like, yeah, he fact check me, yeah. Pull, yeah. pull it up. Yeah, yeah, pull it exactly. up. Pull uh, the clip. That's yeah. so funny. All right, so... But that wasn't it for your music career, because some other things started happening. And yeah. And so what what happened with that? Because I know that we were speaking offline about things started kind of going direction. There were opportunities that were happening. But then, like, you ended up getting married somewhere along the line. And wifey was like, ah. So Yeah. So for me, again, media and code, media and tech. So I knew that I had the biggest leverage as an independent contributor uh, with music. Mm -hmm. That was my thing. So I was reaching a mass amount of people. And eventually I decided decided to pivot before Despacito was a, was a thing. Yeah. I decided to pivot to the Latin music industry. And I pushed through, man. Like, I, I, I got, you know, some accolades. I got some people to recognize me. Uh, if, if you guys are familiar with uh, Colombian artistry, Juanes was a, a big name. He recognized me. J Balvin, I went to MTV3 yeah. wow. in, uh, in down south, man. Like, he... J Balvin reposted some of my music on his Facebook page back yeah. when Facebook was still popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what That's I mean? Cold. And uh, I thought, man, I thought I was it, bro. Yeah. But truth be told, man, like you're you're a dime a dozen when it comes to the music industry. Yeah. And I knew that I had to have those hard skills mm -hmm. that would eventually translate the media production that I had, the music production that I had, to something that was a little bit more tangible. So when I got married, my son was born. I knew that I wanted to have a little bit more stability where I didn't have to travel mm -hmm. as much, where I didn't have to be in front of crowds or whatever. And uh, yeah, I decided to pivot into tech. And the funny thing is the person that got me into tech was another musician friend of mine. And he said that uh, he took a tech uh, coding boot camp in 2016 it was. Yeah. And um, he said a lot of creative people, a lot of musicians have the brain to transfer their skill set into coding yeah the way that the mind works for musicians mm -hmm. it works the same way as it does for coding and that that blew my mind and yeah. so ever since mm -hmm. then man i started taking online classes shouts out to uh, code academy shouts out to edx man i started dabbling in that stuff and uh yeah the rest is history man yo that's fire so in what way in hearing that i, I could see some parallels but in what way would you say Cause, I mean, we got artists, musicians, all different types of people listening. How would you say that the the person that has the mind for for music or just that type of like artistry that they might also have like a bit of a mind when it comes to like coding or just something in tech in general? I would say for me, man, I can't speak for people in general. I would say the first thing is communication. If you're a rapper, if you're an artist that is a lyricist, mm -hmm. the first thing is communication. Yeah. You're you're transferring your knowledge your perspective, the, the things that you see around you into words. And that is literally coding. You are coding a problem. You're taking a problem and you're taking that problem from an abstract thought yeah. to code, yeah. to create a solution for mm -hmm. people. That would be the first thing. The second thing is, I think, 
I don't think people give the, themselves enough credit for the fact that they are able to be logical, mm-hmm. you know? And I feel like, um, I feel like for most artists, they, they have a creative mind, yes, but they can still be very logical, meaning that like they can transfer something that's abstract and create something that other people can understand and feel. Yeah. Right. And so you're, you're transferring something that's abstract and you're transferring into words, feelings that other people can relate to. Mm. So that's still taking something that's super creative, abstract, non-regulated into something that other people can understand, feel, uh, have an impact with, or, or, or rather you, you can impact them for. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. For me, that that that's what resonates with me. I'm sure it's different for other people, but that, I feel like that's what that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, no, that's that's a fire example. If you're interested in breaking into a six-figure career in tech or scaling to over half a million dollars in tech, then this video is for you. If not, then just swipe away. But I was able to break into the tech industry October 2021, and in my first year, I scaled to over half a million dollars in tech. My second year, I was able to gross over a million dollars. More importantly, I was able to freely help over 600 people break into six-figure tech careers as well and scale further in the industry. Now, the number one question I've been getting from people is how was I able to do this? How was I able to make so much money? How was I able to also help as many people as I've been able to help? Well, aside from doing coaching calls and trying to spend a whole bunch of time helping people individually, I've decided to create the Tech Rich Program, where I literally break every single thing down that I've done and what I've been doing to show others how they can break into tech faster or scale to over half a million dollars plus within their first few years in the tech industry as well. All you gotta do, click the link in my bio, all the information's there, check out the description, message me if you have any other questions, and I'll see you on your journey scaling in tech. So you ended up getting in tech, so you had a friend basically put you on and tell you, hey bro, like you could do it, look into this, you did right. a coding boot camp, and were able to get into the tech industry. So once you got in the industry, I mean really like, what was that like? like what was that experience like once you got into the industry and also like just your journey so far in the space? So let me give you context, man. So I started in uh, insurance 2014, still pursuing the music part time. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, I'm trying to be this Latin pop artist, J yeah. Balvin. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the next J Balvin. That's what I'm trying to be. And uh, the reason being was because I wanted to provide for my family, my mm-hmm. immediate family, my wife, my kid, um, and my parents. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was the biggest leverage that I could have. So fast forward five years into the making, and um, I realize that I'm not getting anywhere. Mm-hmm. So I have a frustration. I'm an insurance uh, customer service agent is basically what I'm okay. what I'm at. Six and a half years in the making. And um, I realize, man, I'm like, dude, I'm not getting anywhere with my music. I'm not getting anywhere with my career. What can I do? I call up a friend from middle school. I say, bro, I see you're doing well. What are you doing? He works at Microsoft as an account executive. He tells me, bro, 2014, the year I got hired from my company, I got hired in at 35K. This man got hired in at 90K. And I kid you not, man, like I went to a more prestigious school. You know what I mean? I got a more prestigious degree. But the fact of the matter was, it doesn't matter what you can do theoretically. It matters what you can do practically. So this is why I want to... Why, why I want to press upon people is that you you may feel like you're not as qualified for a specific role, mm-hmm. but if you have the hard skills and you can communicate that well enough, you can catapult to, I mean, the highest levels. You yes. know, limits the sky. Sky's yes. the limit. You know what yeah. I mean? So by the time 2019 came and, and I'm talking to friends that are working at Amazon, Microsoft, at a former uh, career coach, still a career coach of mine, who worked at Uber, Facebook, all that stuff, and they're all all of them, man. They're impressing upon me that like you have to have the confidence first, and then from there you can acquire the hard skills. Mm. That's that that's what it is, you yeah. know. No, that really is what it's. And it's 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 so interesting to hear that because, like, I think through so many things where it, you got me thinking back to I remember three years ago. And I was looking at, you know, of course, looking on social media. Yeah. And I'm looking at all the the, the friends of mine from from back in the day, even my early 20s, where many of them, you know, they, they, they went to school, they got the degrees, and, you know, they were making, you know, 50, 60,000. And to me, where I was at, that was, that was a lot of money because I was yeah. so broke. Yeah. 
And I mean, I remember I was looking online and I was punching myself. I was like, bro, you, you, you're being a, a poet. Like you're like, and mind <laughs> you, I was traveling online. I looked like I was popping. You know, I had a good amount of social media followers. Right. You know, I got to open up for some cool people, you know, especially especially in the, the Christian space. Like I was, you know, I was a very top, like one of the top poets, even especially in the Christian space. He's like, and I mean, yeah, I mean, no, I was getting, I was, getting, I was nice. flying, was like, nice. traveling a lot. I mean, it was it was really huge on paper. It looked cool. But really, I was I was living in a hood and it's like, you know, it was so many people that were telling me like, Cyrus, man, I'm, I'm trying to be like you, man. And I'd be thinking like, <laughs> no, you know, I'd be standing on the other side of my merch table, like, right. that's great. You can your shirt, your fifteen dollars t shirt type thing. And and I and I think through that, and I remember looking at all the people that are, I was like, man, I should have went, I should have went to college, I should have did, should have did that. Right. And of course, like now, and this isn't like a ha ha laughing moment, uh, laughing at those people moment because they're good people. But like I, everything kind of spun around. Yeah. And I was like, man, like. Whoa! I'm happy I didn't do all that stuff, and I'm happy I, you know, God set it up that way for me to, of course, now be in the industry, and now I've been able to help a lot of those same friends now get in the industry who are like, "Yo, Cyrus, man, I'm making fifty, sixty, seventy thousand, bro. I'm trying to get to where you're at now." And I'm like, "Cool, like, yo, let me show you how to get here." Yeah. One of the things I think about though is I look at a lot of artists, and I mean, we 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 could we could talk secular artists. A, a lot of them aren't really making money, and a lot of them that are making money are caught into some crazy deals to where. Yep. The money that they look like they have is really a loan from their label and they got to pay the label back and then mm -hmm. some. But we're not even going to go that direction. Like, realistically, we were talking earlier about like a lot of Christian hip hop artists. Yeah. And bro, I think about this a lot where a lot of the Christian hip hop artists, and we're not talking reach record artists. Sure. Because because they, they, okay, reach record artists, they, they eat. They, most of them are at least eating. Right, right. But it's like the, the vast majority, even the ones that are popping and popular. I know for a fact they're not doing good financially. Yep. And they look so popular. Yeah. Everything looks so great. Yeah. And it's like, I know they're not. And it, and it breaks my heart because I'm like, I think through it. I'm like, and it's not even about just getting a job in tech and like stopping your music career. Sure. But bro, I, I think about this sometimes. And I want, like, I guess, your, your input and thoughts on this. I'm like, yo, a lot of these Christian hip hop artists could really benefit from getting a job in tech mm -hmm. because, and I thought through this as a poet, like I look back and I'm like, man, if I wish I'd have got in tech when I was a poet, because first off, okay, you're artist. you know, when do artists work or usually work for them as a show? Now, mind you, yeah, they're in the studio, you know, they're, they're working on stuff, but even when you're in the studio, most times it's evening. When you're doing mm -hmm. shows, it's evenings and usually weekends. Weekends, yep. Even if it's in the daytime, if it's daytime, it's usually weekend. Or it might be a Friday, maybe in rare occasions a Thursday show, but usually it's weekends and it's nighttime. Right. And then it's like a lot of these artists are, they're using the money they're making from a few of their stops or selling their t-shirts to try to fund their music career. And because of that, they have very little money for yeah. production, very little money for a good engineer, right. very little money for a, a vast majority of things. And it's like, yo, you could get a job in tech, more than likely work remote. You could be on tour. You could literally be yeah. doing a tour, funding your tour, at right. least the first part of your tour until ticket sales come in through your job in tech. And so now, mind you, I think through this, but I know, okay, I've never been a music artist. There are so many layers to it that I don't understand. And so that's why I was like, yo, I've got to have this conversation with Nico because you know levels to it that I don't know. Sure. And so when you think through it, if you could communicate to your younger self or realistically, let's say now, like communicate to like younger artists that are like, man, I don't want to give up my career. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I still want to do this, but man, I'm broke. Like, yeah. what, what would some of your thoughts be with that? I think the biggest thing, man, is like understand that you have to fulfill. Uh, so specifically to the Christian audience and the Christian hip hop audience, I felt a need to uh, fulfill my obligation as a Christian man, right? Yeah. Somebody who was a husband, somebody who was a father. Yeah. Right. Meet the basic needs. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the way that I was operating as a artist was not providing. I was not providing for my family. You yeah. know what I mean? So I had to pivot from that quick. Mind you, I do think that down the line, if you're making six figures, 100, 150, 200, 300K, you could take that money and you could literally invest in either your artistry, 
your music brand, or more importantly, I would say invest in other artists and build a conglomerate. Bro. You know what I mean? That's crazy. Yes, and build a conglomerate. So I'm I'm getting to the point in my life right now, salary wise, where I'm starting to invest in some of my friends. Ooh. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm I'm starting to invest in some of my friends who I know have a good heart, but may may not have the whole wherewithal. Yeah. But I'm not just giving them money, I'm telling them this is what you need to do and advising them and counseling them only because I've been through the ringer as an artist myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think I think that's one of the things. I think the other factor is like you have to understand, man, like this music thing. I grew up around hip hop. I wanted to be a ball player and a rapper. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff is smoke and mirrors, man. Bro. Yes, it is. So so for me and even in the Christian space, dude, like you see these people doing good. And trust me when I say like Cyrus said, they're not doing good. No, they're not. It looks good. Sure. From the outside. But at the end of the day, the friends that were making way more money than I was were living peacefully, quietly, reserved, private, and they were taking first class trips to Italy, Europe. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm asking, what y'all do? Yeah. I work for Amazon. I'm a data scientist. I'm an account executive for Microsoft, yada, yada, so on and so forth. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm making 50K and supporting a family of three. Like... I'm trying to figure out how to get to what where y'all at, yeah. and I'm like rapping for venues of like twenty thousand people. Yeah, mm. and it's not it's not paying the bills. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You have to get into it uh, the right way, and la- I would say leverage technology, leverage the tech field to, uh, to fulfill your dreams. Yeah, yeah, bro, that's that's so good. Uh, that's so good. Such a good. I low key uh, sometimes I think about hitting up uh, Ryan and then with track stars, and be like, bro, like. And I, I'm not really too big on asking people to come on their platform, but I think about it. You know, Ryan actually just got in tech. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Yeah. Right. Yep. He did a boot camp and he's in tech now. He's either in tech sales or I think he's a sales engineer. Mm. One or the other. And he's he's in track stars. And I'm like, bro, are you familiar with track stars? Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, bro, like, you know, I think through like, man, a lot of those artists that come on their radio show, they're they are broke. And I mean... It, especially it became very clear when the pandemic hit it's so like obviously they make their money through tours and uh and and, and mind you i, I want to be very clear there's no shade to any artist this isn't like a oh like we're like you're laughing at somebody because they're broke because again we don't believe that someone's network net worth is connected to their worth or their self-worth Thanks. yeah it's like yo you have self-worth just period it doesn't matter if you're making five million a year or if you're making five bucks a year at the end of the day like you have you have worth because you're made in the image of god i want to be very clear about that nevertheless we care about people's financial health just as we care about their spiritual health and i mean god cares about that like we know this and so that being said a lot of those artists i'm like man they're they're not really doing good and i, I kind of think through and i'm like man these need to be conversations i feel like are not happening it's like mm-hmm. people were talking about i mean it, there are even conversations about like marriage and relationships but it's like bro people are not really talking in the christian community like yo a lot of people are really struggling and they just act like oh it's okay it's like yo god's gonna god's gonna come through and it's like yo sometimes the way god comes through is by the practical wisdom and practical information that's out there man i wish somebody said that to me when i was in college bro because mm-hmm. i felt like I needed that push, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now that I'm talking to my friends who are still in the Christian hip hop space, I feel like I have a duty and a responsibility to share that and impart that upon them, you mm-hmm. know? There's opportunity, here's the thing, when I didn't know English, I didn't know how to communicate my worth. You said it, you said it yourself, I have worth. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if I don't know how to communicate that worth, it's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. So once I learned English, I could communicate my worth to the point that I, my teacher said, Hey, I want to uh I want to jump you a grade, right? When I went into the right space, I got a promotion in 6 months, two levels up and nearly doubled my income. Sheesh. You know, but I didn't know what I didn't know until I started talking to people. So, once I started talking to the right people, once I started listening to the right conversations yeah. from people who either A were in the same position that I was at, who were trying to be ball players, rappers, whatever, and then they transitioned Look at Ryan Leslie, one of the biggest independent artists ever to make it in terms of he self-funded his career. He was in Bad Boy Records. What did he do? He transitioned into tech. He invented Superphone, right? This man's now in, 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 uh, in, in finance. This man went to Harvard, bro. Harvard graduate, 
uh, became a record producer, uh, uh, he, he artist, all mm-hmm. that stuff. What did he do? Even though he was like, like genius, Harvard graduate, all that stuff, working for Bad Boy, he transitioned into tech. Yeah. Chameleon because at the end of the day, man, chameleon, chameleon, too, too yes. bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yes. at the end of the day, you have to sustain yourself. Yeah. And we, I feel a duty and a responsibility to give back to my community. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel a duty and a responsibility. If I came out from this, from the trenches, mm-hmm. from the gutter, what, whatever it was, I feel a duty and a responsibility to give back. If that doesn't push you and motivate you, man, I don't know what will. Bro, come on. You Bro, know? I love that. Bro, so you're able to do, able to get into the tech industry. And we talked about, of course, you leveraging skill sets that you had outside of what you're able to learn in the boot camp, but other skill sets you had to be able to, of course, get in tech, but also be able to scale. But what are some things that you've done? Because a lot, a lot of people are missing out on the value of building a brand. And I mean, I'm watching you online. And I'm like, yo, this guy's building a brand. He like his stuff is like really quality, really good. And I see a lot of people that are in tech that are making money, and maybe they're even using that money and pouring into other stuff that's dope. But a lot of them are not really caring a lot or caring much at all about their their name, image, and likeness, their own personal brand. And so, one, how have you been able to build a brand? And two, like, why do you believe it's important that people build a brand? When you're a musician, an artist, you're a dime a dozen. The yeah. only thing that sells your music is your brand. So True. I learned that early on, and I knew that regardless of where I, I went, I knew I had to build my brand. And I'll tell you this much, man. The fact that I built my brand on LinkedIn early on is why I got the promotions that I got. Mm. Yep. And and you gave me the confidence too, man. Like when we talked, you said continue to build your brand, continue yeah. to use that leverage. I'm still doing that to this day. But the fact of the matter was, I didn't know what I didn't know. I transferred my brand from Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, whatever, where, wherever platform you're on, to LinkedIn. Yeah. And I started making those connections, man. And in t- 2020, man, like one of my senior vice presidents basically hand me t- handed me two job opportunities because of the fact that I was documenting my journey mm-hmm. and branding myself in the appropriate way. And that's what catapulted my career outside of customer service, outside of uh, auto claims and into eventually tech. It yeah. went from risk management, two years into that, double promotion to eventually landing that internal opportunity for a boot camp in tech to now becoming a software engineer. And mind you, I'm not the best software engineer. I'm not like trying to proclaim that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, dude, like that's what catapulted me into that in, into that career space. Mm-hmm. And I know that I can take those hard skills and transfer transfer them elsewhere mm-hmm. or become like a product owner, product manager and skyrocket my career, yeah. man. You know, it, it all comes down to personal branding nowadays. That's real. Yeah. You know? Bro, so bro, we had a a few different conversations here, man. I got to learn a lot about you that I didn't know. And uh Bro, like, I'm, bro, so happy that your family was able to escape that situation uh, that they were in and everything that was happening. I think about, I want to kind of circle back to the beginning. There was something you said at the beginning where you were talking about how, and, and I love that you harped on it. You had mentioned how you said, yo, to the rest of the world, the Narcos, the, the Pablo Escobar, all that stuff looks so cool. And it's right. like, oh, like. But it's like, yo, to us, it was a terrorist. Like, that was yeah. a horrible space to be in. Yeah. And sometimes I think about this. I think I shared this with Eric before. Sometimes I look at this state of, and I mean, I'll say this boldly. Like, I look at a lot of people that are that are seeing rappers get locked up. You know, rappers that are getting locked up that have done atrocious things. And people are saying, yo, free this rapper. Free this person. Free that mm-hmm. person. Yeah. And, you know, I was looking at it. And I was thinking. And I said, you know what? I said, this is exactly the same way Nazis celebrated Hitler. It's the same way that certain certain Russians celebrated Stalin or right. the same way to bring it closer to home, the same way certain people thought Pablo was cool. Right. And it's like, yo, it's a terrorist. And of course, even today, especially those of us that didn't live in that, we watch these shows or we look at that stuff and we hear, oh, that's old Pablo Escobar, right. you know? And it's like, I look at that today and I'm like, it makes me sick to my stomach. I'm like, we're just as goofy. And I don't care how y'all feel about this. I mean, let that's me know what real. y'all think. But I'm going to tell y'all, we're just as goofy when we, when we say free this rapper or we celebrate these people. And then they're literally rich from being serial killers. 
and perpetuating the same through their music. Yes. They're they're rapping that they're a serial killer. It's almost as if Jeffrey right. Dahmer, you gave him a microphone right. and he started like bragging right. about the things he did. And then people were like, oh my God, that's so incredible. Let's put him on a stage. Let's pay him all right. this money. Then he gets locked up and everybody says, man, free Dahmer. Free Jeffrey. It's like, right. what? And so, and that's, and I, I wanted to say that earlier. And I was like, y'all, I want to mention that because I feel like that was so important. And I think that's the way people can resonate with it in a way that, you know, they can kind of kind of touch base with it. Right. And so I was happy that you said the way that you didn't just say, oh, man, we, we got away because it was crazy. But you really doubled down on that. And so I'm grateful to God that your family was able to get out of that situation, able to escape those assassination attempts, all of those different elements that clearly God from the beginning had his hand on you, had his hand on your family. And I'm just grateful for your journey, for where you're able to get to now. Thankful for, thankful just really for you coming on the platform, bro. Like you sharing your story, you sharing the gems and nuggets that could truly help people, especially a lot of artists that are out here and really a lot of immigrants 